Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, hello, I'm Lydia. My voice is really croaky. Is my voice all croaky? <coughs> did that help? Yes, it did help. Yay. <laughs> Hey what's up you guys, welcome back to my channel, if you're new here, hi hello I'm Lydia and today we're going to be talking about my toxic ex. Now if you, was watching, if you watched my last video talking about Lanterby and I mentioned this toxic ex, it's linked here if you haven't already seen it. My toxic ex, what a video this is going to be. So in 2018 I dated someone who lives in Leeds. I lived in Lancashire so it wasn't really long distance, it was two hours on a train. This person I was dating in Leeds had a court case coming up that I went to with her. And now the court case wasn't, wasn't a violent offence, it was for... Just to add in, she did have previous conviction for violent offences, which should have been a big red flag. Harassment of her crisis team, breach of CBO, which is criminal behaviour order. I believe there was two breaches of the CBO. I can't remember exactly. This was literally three days after I'd met this girl. We wasn't dating at the time. We started dating after the court case. By that I mean right after the court case, we went back to hers. She asked me out, I said yeah. In this relationship I was manipulated and taken advantage of in so many ways. One, there's an actual sexual assault, but that aside, actually no, let's talk about that. So we were sleeping in the same bed, shock horror, I know, two girls day in, sleeping in the same bed, damn. I hope people get my sarcasm. So we were sleeping in the same bed and while I was asleep she touched me. I only know that because she told me when I woke up, like, oh I touched you. I hope you don't mind. Let, let me think about it. Um, yeah, I do mind. Thank you. After that she then gets a call from her solicitor. Telling her she needs to hand herself in. It's a whole big thing it goes off. She doesn't end up getting arrested. She's allowed to go. But then she decides to text her social worker. I'm running away. And comes to my in. I didn't know she'd text her social worker that. Because believe me, if I'd have known that. She had sent that text that I would not have let her come back to my flat. Like, there's no way I would have been involved in that had I known. But no, yeah, let's take advantage of Lydia some more. And the next day I had police at my door looking for her. And I'll never forget what this police officer said it was those even. Is she making you keep her here? I'm not the first person she's done all this to. But she really got me believing in this whole conspiracy against her. Of West Yorkshire Police. She really got me believing it. In reality, it was just West Yorkshire Police doing their jobs and following up on serious crime, like death threats, which is what was going on. That's why the police wanted to speak to her over some WhatsApp messages she sent. That's why she ran away. And like I said, this is the time I was on Alanzapine. For those who haven't seen the Alanzapine and me video, Alanzapine made me very psychotic. It made me really ill, which is why it's such a big deal in this video. So I was really struggling myself. I trusted her, but she had me again. And like on YouTube and making videos against the West Yorkshire police. These videos aren't up any longer. 
just to point out how serious this actually was, she had me record a court case and use that footage in a video and say how West Yorkshire police were harassing her. Like she had me film a fucking court case. She had me wrapped around her little finger. I did it exactly as she wanted every single time. The cherry on top of the cake is she said this in a simple word so I'm about to put it. If I can't fuck you, I'm gonna fuck other people. That's okay, right? Like, if I didn't answer the phone, she'd phone and 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 text. I remember once there was an occasion where she texted me 300 times. I remember I, I'm still ill with psychosis. It was just calls and texts constantly. Anyone who knows me knows I'm the worst person at answering a message. The best way to get hold of me is to the message, message me on Twitter. She made me believe that the people I live in with was conspiring against me. Which I didn't even know them, so why would they be? My friends were toxic and I should leave them because they're making me ill. But that's not all the behind the scenes stuff that went on. She then started to message my friends about one of my other exes history and started saying they were bad people and blah 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 and everything. She made me lose so many friends so quickly. I used to go out on nights out and enjoy mixing them with people. But the people I mixed with had been messaged by her. So they didn't want to hang out with me because of the association. Not to mention all the times that she accused me of cheating on her when I wasn't just because I was hanging out with the other guys. Like, it was unbearable. One minute I'm, che I'm a cheater, the next she wants me by her side, the next she's sleeping with other people because I'm not there. Yeah, you heard me right. She was sleeping with other people while with me just because she craved sex. That's not a relationship. I then said sex doesn't make a relationship and she said sex. A relationship without sex is like a boat without water. Which I don't think is the case and I don't believe. I believe a relationship is about the connection. I truly believe the only reason she actually told me about that was to try and pressure me into having sex with her. Those of you who don't know, since I've been sexually assaulted, I don't find intimacy easy. I actually really struggle with that. So... Yeah, that was a good part of the relationship. I truly believe she didn't want me to have anyone to turn to. She wants to be the only person in my life. Which is why she pushed all my friends away from me. Which is why she made the running away thing to my flat. It just that's the only way I can make sense of it, is that she wanted me to herself.
The entire relationship revolved around me giving to her. Which to a degree is fine, a relationship works both ways. You give some, you get some. But when I say she needed me all the time is no matter what I had to do, or I had an appointment or not, I had to drop everything and focus on her. I once said I was out of Gotta Go, I've got an appointment with my psychiatrist. I, I need to go to this appointment. And then she threatened to cut her through it. So I dropped the appointment. Like, if I didn't do what she wanted, she'd threaten to kill herself. Be like, you don't love me, I'm gonna kill myself. I can't live without you, I'm gonna kill myself. But in mind, she knew previously that my ex said that and did that. One of my other exes previously committed suicide in front of me after breaking up, me breaking up with him. So her threatening this, knowing what she knew, it was just a, a play to get me. Not to mention she made the whole relationship revolve around sex. She was like, I, feel, I, feel, I, I can't sleep with you, I'm going to sleep with other people. Very matter of fact. Not asking permission. Because bitch, if she'd have asked, I'd have said, so you want to cheat on me. The whole relationship was just toxic. I had to be here. When we broke up, she continuously called me and texted me and called and called and called and called and called. And wouldn't stop until I got the police involved. That was the only thing that made her stop. What she was doing to me would have been a, a third breach of SDBM, which means prison time. I'm just glad that it wasn't like a close relationship. I'm glad it was there was some distance between us because it made it harder for her to harass me. That's all I've got for this video. If you're new, subscribe. My links are all in the description down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.